Hello and welcome to me, Dazblade, and my adventures in Minecraft. So I've been up to some chores, you know, we all hate chores, but chores, although they may be boring, they do have to be done. And yeah, I thought it was about time, ooh, don't want to see that just yet. And I thought it was about time I got a few chores um, out of the way and overdone, stuff that I've been building up that, you know, just laziness really that i i had done things with them so sh let's have a um let's have a quick look at see what i've been up to with these here chores So that's chore number one completed. As you can see behind me, we have Unbreaking 3 and Efficiency 5, which is very nice indeed. And if we have a quick look here, poor Jeff has been at it again. Um, he's died so much now, I've decided I'm going to start putting numbers after his name. So we're now on Jeff the Fourth. <laughs> <laughs> who knows who knows how many more times he's gonna die oh jeff what are you like i don't know what we're gonna do with you mate um now i've left this piston here um purely because um i've had an idea or an easier way i think to zombify um these villagers once they're in place um i think you can probably guess hmm well I shall put you out of your misery and tell you. Basically, what we're going to do is, thanks to um, Zimbi here, um, we now have Zimbi Jr. Yes, we do, Zimbi Jr. What's the piston doing there? Go and ask. Um, yes, we have Zimbi Jr., who I'm hoping is going to be a right little ankle biter. Are you going to be an ankle biter, Zimbi Jr.? I hope you are. So the plan is that he will pathfind over towards whichever villager um i may have um on display so let's say it's him i'm hoping he'll pass find over of course i'm going to drag the boat over a bit closer so zimbi can um do his path founding and hopefully he'll go munch yum 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 nom 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 munch munch on the little ankles down there and job done well that's the plan but yeah that's um going to be tried out in a later time Chore number two. This has been something that's been on my mind for quite a while. If you remember, or may maybe you don't remember, I don't know, I used to have a dirt block here and this was open and it just looked a right mess. So all I've done is popped a little slab on here, put a bit of glow lichen on, and I got a bit carried away with the glow lichen, you know, as you do, so I put some up there as well, just to make it look all nice. Um, as far as I know, when the baby villager is transported, um, I mean, he obviously goes through, because obviously I've got villagers in there. Um, I'm not sure whether he takes any uh, damage from this block. I don't think he does, because I think it goes pretty fast um, under there. So, yeah, so that's chores number one and two. So, what's next on the list?
We've now added brown wool to our farm, and that's just what we needed. Um, if we have a quick look in here, it's coming along nicely. So I think we can tick off chore number three. This next thing is not really a chore as such, but I just wanted to show you what I did. Basically, around here, I've added underfloor lighting. Each of these pieces of cobblestone indicates where I have a torch. Um, I'll show you what I mean. There we go. So we have slabs and torches there. The slab just covers it over. And voila! Underfloor lighting. Now, one of the things I want to learn more about is that mystical redstone, the sorcery of redstone mechanics and making redstone things um, like this, for example. This piece of nonsense is just a basic piece of redstone. I don't know what, what you call it. Do you call it a redstone clock? I don't know the terminology, but look. It's fun! The piston goes up and down and up and down. How fun is that? I could sit here, just watch this, do a bit of fishing maybe over there, collect a bit of sugar cane, watch this piston go. Anyway, behave! That's enough of that nonsense. That's not what I wanted to show you. What I do want to show you is the automated wheat farm. Well, I say automated, I still have to push a button to make it work. But, it is a bit better. Mm, I don't know about this um, entrance. Uh, I knocked it up quite quickly, but I don't know. It, it does the job. It keeps the, uh, keeps the bees, stops them from escaping. Um, this is going to be a big greenhouse, by the way, um, which we'll come to in a moment. But, yeah, so, um, I mean, the redstone's on display here. I mean, really, what I should have done is took the redstone underground instead of overground. Underground, not overground. But it's overground. So there you have it. What can I say? Um, we've got the water here that transports the sheep. The sheep? It's not sheep, it's wheat. Transports the wheat and the seeds very quickly down into the hopper down there. And in fact, actually, is all this wheat grown? I can actually uh, show you, can't I? But just before I do it, let's have a look. Down here, we've, this is where I come back to the redstone thing, because I just want to learn more redstone. Now, I, I was pushing myself with this. I decided to do it all from memory without looking at any tutorials. That said, all this does come from watching tutorials and watching other great minecrafters out there making their various contraptions but i tried my best to try and remember it as much as possible and i think i did it quite well it's it's very basic and simple um i say that to a redstone uh, veteran it's a very basic and simple to me <laughs> it took a, a long time of messing about faffing about sorting things out testing things moving things until i eventually got it to work so we've got the item sorts the wheat in that one that chest and the seeds in that chest with the seeds come over here and i can compost them and Start making bone meal. Bone meal is good. Bone meal is very good. 
Now, when we get the update, I could possibly set up some kind of auto crafting facility that will automatically do this for me, basically. Automatically craft the uh, whatever's in there and in there and there. And yeah. <laughs> I think it's like that. Anyway, let's give you a quick demonstration. Push the button, water flows out, shoves everything down. Might have to push it again. Push it again to get those bits up there. They're not coming down. This is a bad demonstration. But let me just show you down here the sorting. So, seeds going in there. Wheat going in there, and it's already done it by the looks of it. Wheat's still going in. I think all the seeds might have gone in. Still got wheat going in. Any seeds? That, that is definitely a higher number than what I just showed you. Oh, there it goes. See? And that is just a basic item sorter. And the beauty of this system, you know, I might even make a little tutorial on it. Never done a tutorial before. But the beauty of this system is it can be easily expanded to any kind of size. And of course, it incorporates our uniform with the bees flying over um, the wheat, making it grow much faster by when they drop in their um, particles. Um, obviously, the manual part of it is having to have to replant the wheat, but hey ho. And in the future, we could even automate this bee farms to automate our honey and um, honey blocks. So let's just see if we can get the rest of those goodies to come traveling down see something that's come traveling down um yeah oh well it, it's pretty good anyway i like it so that's another one ticked off the list okay next up was to get rid of our wheat farmer and the all of the wheat farm and we've con now converted it successfully into a pumpkin <laughs> a pumpkin and yeah it's a pumpkin and melon farm um you playing that dog blade come on keep up boy keep up so here we have it let's just uh uh okay you can s s sit down there oh dog blade come hither you sit there for a minute okay so we have a simple system. It was quite good, actually, because I didn't have to um, demolish the building and I already had the collection system in place, so that was all pretty groovy. Um, now, this one is from um, a tutorial that I saw, and it, uh, who was it? Um, I think it was Prowl. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Prowl, yeah. Um, so basically you're making like a, a, a checkerboard effect in there um, and you alternate the pistons and so on. A few observers in there. Um, so when something, when the observers detect something, every single piston in the farm or will all push down and the collection system will collect whatever comes of it, whether it's melons, pumpkins or whatever. And here we have it so i had to amend this system because previously this was running permanently um before i didn't think to have something in place some redstone um, but we're learning redstone i didn't think to have any redstone in place to uh, make the cart automatically stop here unload and then automatically go off on its way again after it's unloaded all its goods but now that is exactly what it does do and in here you see we're getting uh, loads of pumpkins, we're getting melon slicers. As the melon slicers are coming in, um, we just crafted them. Oh, did you hear the pistons go there? So we'll be getting a collection anytime soon. And um, yep, so we've got the melons there. So if we watch this, you'll see when um, when the minecart gets back, he will stop ever and he will un unload all his, um, all his goods. So we'll just wait for that to catch up. And here we go, here is it. Let's have a look, see what we're getting in there. We're getting some pumpkins, getting some melon slicers. Now, you may ask, why did I get rid of this wheat farm and replace it with the other wheat farm? Well, the other wheat farm was fun, <laughs> fun to do, and it serves its purposes, basically. Um, and a melon and pumpkin farm, as you may or may not know, is good for trading with farmer villagers. 
and they are going to be the next villagers I get into our trading hall. I'm going to get a couple of farmers in there and we can sell them melons and pumpkins and get more emeralds and um, do all the tradey, tradey, trading stuff, which is all good. This is a, another better view of it. You can see inside there where everything's planted. Um, when the observers detect um, a movement in there, something growing, um, every single piston will get fired. And I've only used four observers, which was recommended by Prowl, but I think he did say you could could go up to eight maximum. Anything more than that would be overkill or break it. He explains it all. Go and watch his tutorial. It's a good one. Of course, finish watching the rest of this episode first and then go and watch his tutorial. Highly recommend it, especially if you need um, a melon and pumpkin farm. Very efficient. Okay, Dogblade, it's time for me and thee to get back to base. We've got a green ass to build over our new sort of automatic wheat farm. Come on, boy, let's go. Okay, Cat Blade, Dog Blade, you guys better behave yourselves because now we're going to be jumping into some speedy time to get this green ass completed. Yay, are we all excited? Uh, yeah, okay, let's go. Don't you just hate chores? Oh, I've a bit of relaxing fishing. Oh dear me, I need it. I need this rest. I need this rest. You just hate chores. Speaking of chores, aren't I supposed to be doing some chores? Better get back to it. I got two farmers. Yay! Golden carrots for life. Uh, still got a bit of cooked beef to finish off. We now have a practically perfect villager breeding system. So the water stream now goes directly to the track. So I push the button and the cart comes out, grabs the baby villager, takes him down these tracks down there and does that business over there. I also added some gates here. It, I can't open! <laughs> open the gates so I can get easily get in and out and everything is looking hang on a minute these aren't the chores I'm supposed to be doing let's get back to the green ass speaking of the green ass we're halfway there we now just need to get the other half done but don't blink or you'll miss it and we're done what? you didn't see it? What do you mean? I did tell you not to blink. Did you blink? It's done. Let's have a look at it from some other angles, shall we? <laughs> yeah, it looks okay from over here. Um, I used white stained glass and obviously uh, copper. I uh, tried to do the very same lighting at the top there, same as we've got up there to keep it consistent. So... Hmm, it doesn't look too bad, does it? 
Let's try another angle. Ooh, this is a good angle. Get a bit of a more clearer view of it. Um, it all, all looks the same all the way around, or it should do. <laughs> I, I've checked it and double checked it to make sure I've not missed any um, missed any gaps there. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's take another look from another view. Looking okay from over here. It really is. And from here, this is quite a nice view too. A bit higher up. But just wander over here a bit. And have a quick um, quick look from this side. Hmm, not too bad. And from here. Bit further away. <laughs> in fact we're that far away, the um the light's not even not even rendering in. Hmm. Yes. Woohoo! And this is what it looks like from the inside. Um, I didn't go for a totally circular design. It's kind of a mixture, a circular, squarey, circular, circularly squarey thingy jig. That's what it is. A bit like, um, I'll tell you what it reminds me of. Yeah. Do you ever remember a game called Cuba? Well, if you're old enough to remember that game, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And this bit of dirt here marks the exact centre spot, which I've done just in case I need to do something inside here. I don't know, might, might just leave it empty like this or I might, uh, might do something inside it. But what does need doing is some terraforming around here. We need to make all, all this look nice at the back. So that's gonna take some time to do, but it will um, it will make it look a, a hell of a lot better this area once once this is all nicely terraformed. So yes, um, the green ass is finally more or less done. I still got to um, automate this honey farm, and then that'll be like the final the final chore for there. Um, probably won't get around to doing that this episode, but. Um, it may be or maybe not done for next episode i also need to get a uh, mob farm so we can get even more xp we're getting loads of xp from from the traders um so that's you know doing all, all the necessary repairs on tools and whatnot so yeah we'll have to uh we'll have to wait and see what happens oh yeah the, the wiki says that you should be able to dye the dog collar. However, when I try to do it, hmm, nothing happens. So I'm thinking that must be just a Java thing. Damn Java. Hmm. We need to be able to do it on bedrock. Why? Why can't I do it? I want a red collar. He should have a red collar, shouldn't you, Dog Blade? He's dying for a red collar. Well, he's not dying because he's not going to die, but he wants a red collar. I want him to have a red collar. So when we come to do the mob spawner, I want to do it multiple platforms and I'd love to do it in here. I haven't really um, fully looked into it yet, but I can't see any reason why I shouldn't be able to do it in here. I could have like a good five or six platforms having them dropping down so we get lots and lots of spawns. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I need to uh, look into that more, but hopefully we could do that next episode speaking of next episode we also need to get this um, building completed I think this has been the longest incomplete building since the series started so get that finished and in here I was thinking of putting the library or enchanting setup library enchanting setup library enchanter you know what I'm talking about but yeah, we could have that in here, and I think that could look um, look quite nice. I mentioned about the terraforming that needs doing behind this green ass. Also, terraforming of that mountain over there. 
I want to make it. Uh, I want to make it bigger, um, so it'll look. It'll look all right when the um, the tunneling system is going through it. So at the moment, it looks a bit. Um, it looks a bit. Um, yeah, it looks a bit like that. That's right. Okay, I think that'll just about do us for today's episode. So hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and put any comments in the comments below anything you might want to say feedback constructive criticism it's all welcome thank you goodbye